Erica here with Prep Scholar GMAT. Back today with why your GMAT score isn't improving, or how to get past a GMAT plateau. Now, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can get one-on-one -on -one online tutoring from me, Erica, or from another GMAT expert with Prep Scholar GMAT. You can head over to our website to sign up or learn more about our other customized online prep options. As always, links are in the description. And if you like this video, we've got a lot more great GMAT content, so check out our channel and subscribe for updates on new videos and new live streams. All right, so first, let's define what a plateau actually is. If you're only putting in a few hours of study per week, you likely haven't hit a plateau. You just aren't studying enough to make much of a difference. If it's been less than a month since you've seen your last score improvement, again, you likely haven't hit a plateau. You just haven't taken enough time to solidify any progress you've made over the last couple of months through your practice. Now, if you've been studying more than a few hours each week and your score hasn't improved over the course of several months, this is starting to look more like an actual plateau. All right, so if it's possible that you have hit a plateau, get ready for a little tough love. If you're struggling to improve your score, you've likely thought that you're just bad at the GMAT. It's the most common thing I hear from new students. However, this is a pretty bad assessment and kind of a cop-out. If you're studying regularly and your score still isn't improving, it isn't that you're bad at the test, it's that you're bad at studying. Now, this is never something that people want to hear. It's why videos on idioms and quick tips are more popular than videos in study strategy. Changing your study strategy is hard and it takes a lot of personal accountability. So if you weren't happy to hear that your study might be the root of your problem, you probably need this wake-up call the most. Now, obviously, there is such a thing as too little study, which is why we aren't talking about the people who are only studying a couple hours per week. However, the main problem I see from students is actually the opposite, prioritizing quantity of study over quality of study. Pretty much every student who puts in 10 plus hours of study each week thinks they're working hard, but in most cases, they're just wasting their time because their study is lazy. Okay, so what does lazy study mean? First, lazy study is not addressing mistakes when they occur. Now, this is the main culprit. A lot of people justify continued mistakes because at least they're getting exposed to new problems, right? But that's a bad call. If you've made the same mistake three or more times, continuing to make that mistake isn't good practice. In fact, it's gonna hurt you even more than it's going to help you. Every time you make the mistake, you're further developing a bad habit and making it more and more likely that you'll make that same mistake again. It's because of this that no practice is better than bad practice. And I'm actually gonna say that one more time. No practice is better than bad practice. All right, second, lazy study is not targeting errors. My favorite signal that a student is studying poorly is when they tell me that their study plan is to do all of the OG questions. If your plan is to fix your own highly personal weaknesses by working through a bunch of random problems, you're probably more concerned with feeling productive than being productive. This kind of study is somewhat likely to help a beginner who's still learning what is and what isn't on the test. But if you've hit a plateau, that's not you. There are specific things that you are struggling with, and you should be spending your time focused on those specific things. All right, third, lazy study is an inconsistent schedule. If you aren't studying at least four days a week, or if you're studying more than four hours in one day, your study schedule is probably hurting you. Now again, this isn't an issue of how much you study. It's how that study is structured. It's critical that you, one, build in time to review and apply what you've learned a couple times shortly after you've learned it, and two, build in time for that learning to sit with you. Even if you do a really good job addressing your mistakes when they happen, if you don't come back to them soon, what you learned isn't gonna stick with you. You need to space your study throughout the week. Similarly, if you don't give your brain any time to rest and make the connections it needs, you're just gonna wear yourself out and keep making the same mistakes. Binge sessions aren't productive. They're often unproductive as study quality tends to decline quickly. All right, fourth, lazy study is pushing through burnout. If you're stressed and exhausted and dreading your study, you probably aren't doing particularly good study. You're just further burning yourself out, which is likely negatively affecting other aspects of your life. Again, no practice is gonna be better than bad practice. So what's the solution? How can you get over a plateau? Well, obviously you need to do something different. You can't get different results doing the same thing, so don't try it. Now the first option is to get good at studying. There are tons of resources out there about how to work smarter, not harder. We've got quite a few videos on the subject. 
Now, the main thing that you can do is to keep an error log to learn from your mistakes. Check out our error log video for more on what an error log is. However, keeping an error log isn't just a box you can tick off. You need to really use this process. Be diligent. Don't blow off a problem that you only kind of understand. Be sure why the wrong answers are wrong and why the correct answers are right. Now, just as important, be sure that you can do it. Rework the problem. Pull out strategies that you can apply to similar problems, and so on. Now then, you're going to want to use your errors to adjust what you study. In some cases, you might be struggling with a particular content area, but it's much more likely to be application of specific strategies. Target these content areas and strategies with problems and drills that require them. All right, finally, set a schedule with goals for the day. Like we discussed earlier, make sure that these are good goals. Studying for 30 minutes, bad goal. Working through the next 10 problems in the book, bad goal. Now, if you're going, I'm doing all of this and it isn't working, again, tough love. You're probably not doing it well. Maybe you didn't find a good explanation for why C is right over B before moving on, or you didn't practice particularly good problems to address your difficulty with picking numbers, or you haven't pursued your errors far enough to see that it isn't really an issue with data sufficiency and word problems, it's an issue with scratch paper management. Or maybe you really aren't sticking to your study goals for the day, and you just don't want to admit it to yourself. Now, if this is you, you can still work to fix it. It's a battle, but it's one that will serve you well in your life and career. But if that's just too much time and energy to spend on the GMAT, you likely need help. And that's okay, know yourself. It's just gonna cost a little bit of money. A customized prep option like Prep Scholar is a great bet for ensuring that you're addressing and targeting your errors. With explanations for every problem and a weekly study schedule that adjusts to what you are working on based on your progress over the past week, it handles a lot of the thought and hard work behind smart study for you. Now, if you're looking for more accountability and even more personalized help, get a tutor. The internet is great because you can meet with a GMAT expert like me and the other tutors at Prep Scholar from the convenience of your own home. Now, if you are burnt out, getting good at studying or getting help probably isn't going to do much for you. What is gonna help is taking a break. Now, I've seen students do great study, see zero score improvement for a few months, take a few weeks off, come on back, and see their scores jump by hundreds of points. Rest and relaxation is no joke. If you need a break, take a break. Don't keep pushing through. A final tip, if you're really struggling with your study, work on your attitude. Discouragement is the enemy of progress. Mistakes are opportunities to learn and improve, so approach them as such. And that's how to get over a GMAT plateau. If you have any questions on what we talked about in this video, please leave a suggestion in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy GMAT studies.